boxing is a sport that's never been shy to utilize race and ethnicity to create a theatrical spectacle. In the past 50 years, no professional boxer has begun a career and sustained unbeaten success for as long as has Julio Cesar Chavez. Popes, presidents, drug lords, fighters respect him, fans adore him. Chavez era el hombre del pueblo, del barrio, comiendo lo que comen los mexicanos, escuchando la música que escuchan los mexicanos y boxeando como mexicano. Siempre tuve el cariño, el respaldo de, de todo, de todo, de todo México. Julio was the star of stars and below the heavyweight division until Oscar De La Hoya came along. Look at this. Where have you ever seen in the sport of boxing a good-looking kid, so articulate? The love that I received in my country here was incredible. I'm representing East Los Angeles. I'm representing Latin Americans. I'm representing Mexicans. It wasn't until the Chavez fight that people started questioning and people started saying, he's not a real Mexican. There was a huge crowd there. Oscar got noticeably booed. When Chavez turned to somebody and said, I've never been booed in my hometown. Everywhere I would go, he's gonna kick your ass. He's gonna beat you. He's our hero. He had gotten a letter from the president of Mexico. He better not wear the Mexican flag on his trunks. Oscar bore a bunch of that attitude of not being Mexican enough. La gente que vive en Estados Unidos, Mexicana, it's incredible how they love you, how they love you. At the time, we didn't know they were cartel, and they threatened, if, look, if you beat them, something's going to happen. I don't think boxing has ever captured that excitement for us, like this fight. It was like the world was telling us there's one way to be Mexican, Oscar's way, or the Julio way. Me tenía miedo. Me tenía miedo porque yo miraba sus ojos. Deep down inside, I was like, I'm gonna prove to all these Mexicans that I'm Mexican enough. Hi, I am Rosie Perez, and I am here to interview the amazing actress and filmmaker, Eva Longoria, with her documentary full-length debut, La Guerra Civil, The Civil War. I'm so happy you are doing this. Yes, yes, I'm ecstatic. The film is amazing. This is uh, your first documentary. My first feature length, yeah. I've done two short documentaries, but this is my first big feature, yeah. Oh, wow, this is, this is amazing. And first of all, I had no idea that you were a boxing fan. Yeah. How did I'm that come about? Is it a cultural thing, like the same with Puerto Ricans? Yeah, I know. You know, it's so funny because Rosalind Sanchez is one of my best friends and she was the first woman, I, the other woman I met, she's she's into it. She's like into the boxing scene. And I was like, oh my God, so are we as Mexicans. We are like, it's our opera. You know, we get, you know, we used to get dressed up and go to the fights and it was like, it was the thing. It was a big thing for us. And, you know, we have, we've had a lot of heroes, a la Julio Cesar Chavez and Oscar de la Hoya. And so for us, it's like, it was like the golden age of boxing when when these guys were there. So is this what this idea was this your idea? Did you have it for a long time? Did someone bring it to you? No, Oscar. I've known Oscar 25 years. We used to be the little rascals here in Hollywood. And um, so he came to me you know, a couple of years ago and he said, hey, the 25th anniversary of this fight is coming up. It was a really important fight. You want to do the documentary? And I was like, oh, God, no, no. I mean, like boxing doc, like stats and jabs and no, I don't want to do that. I said, but what is interesting to me about that fight, I go, I remember that fight. I remember where I was. I remember the divide it caused in our household. Within the Mexican community, people were, were torn apart. I mean, uh, my grandpa and my dad were for Julio and me and my primos, we were all for my cousins, we were all for Oscar because we were Mexican American. And uh, so I said, you know, it'd be interesting to look at that fight with that lens because I feel, I still feel today we have these, these factioning off 
of our community. And what you see in the documentary is how um, opposite they are, you know, at the beginning of the documentary, young versus old and the, the Mexican national versus the American and the, the legend and champion versus the up and comer. Like they figured out every possible conflicting way to position this fight. And then by the end of the documentary, you realize, oh my God, they're both the same. They're very similar, very similar. And I feel like that with our community, our Latino community, you know, I know we're not monolithic. And there are differences, you know, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Mexican, Central American, whatever you are. But if you look at our cultures, we are more alike and we're going to have to figure that out as a community because we do have bigger fights to fight. Right? <laughs> like right. this was a fight in the ring, but I'm talking about the fights we have in society, access to education, access to healthcare, access to voting. And I think we as a community need to start figuring out, all right, what do we all have in common? What do we all agree on so we can fight for that? And that's the lens in which we did this documentary. And that is something I do know. So I'm not a boxing expert. I didn't need to be a boxing expert. I wanted to na to, to really explore identity and how people navigate growing up with that identity. All right. So this is a boxing still a, still yet it is a boxing documentary mm -hmm. on one of the greatest fights in boxing history i would say that it's probably about the top five fights uh, you know the god the legend uh you know uh cesar chavez versus yeah. the yeah. golden yeah. boy yeah. Who knows? Uh, versus the golden boy oscar de la hoya and i love the title who came up with the title of this documentary? I did. I did. And I had to fight for it because I they were like, no, let's call it, you know, this. Let's call it that. And I was like, no, it's like it was the civil war within our community. We were fighting against each other. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy you like it because I really fought for that. I love it. I love it because I'm also a political creature, as you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm also a boxing head. I'm I'm a fanatical fan. I yes. actually won the Golden Glove Award for Boxing Fan of the Year, and uh, by Oscar De La Hoya. Ah! How ridiculous of a fan I am. So when this came to me, I was like, Oh my gosh! Yes, yes, I am so in. Um, that makes but so I fun. have to say this on, on, you know, on the social political level it was genius. It was genius because what most people don't understand about boxing, it is political. It is mm -hmm. social. It does deal with everything about life. Mm -hmm. And for you to come up with that idea to not just have it become a standard boxing documentary mm -hmm. as all do mm -hmm. and, and take it from this angle was pretty, pretty genius. Oh. And I want you to explain to people about the differences of the diaspora here in America versus um, the people there on in the on the mainland. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. Mexican nationals versus Mexican Americans. You know, I I'm ninth generation Texan. I'm a Texican, and um, and you know, Oscar was first generation, but he by by all his knowledge he is Mexican, right? Like he grew up in a Mexican household. They grew up speaking Spanish. He grew up eating rice and beans. He grew up listening to Chente Fernandez and, and everybody else. He just went, he just was born here and he went to a school that spoke English. And so when he went to the Olympics for the United States and won the gold, an aunt of his came down and gave him a Mexican flag because they, you know, the, his whole family was there that was all Mexican and his mother had passed away who was Mexican. So he was really winning the gold for her. And she handed like last minute, just handed him a little Mexican flag. So when he was in the ring and he held up the American and Mexican flag, the, the Mexican population in the United States like swelled with pride. They go, Oh my God, what a brave thing that kid, he was 17. He didn't know he was doing a political statement. He was just like, this is for my mom. This is for my dad who are Mexican. Like I'm proud, I'm proud of who I am. And, and he said, it wasn't until then. And he, you know, he almost got, you know, stripped of the medal for doing that because you can't win for one country and raise the flag of another. And, um, and so he, that started this kind of conversation where all Mexicans in the United States really adopted him as their own. I mean, they were like, yeah, as you know, he's from East LA. Um, you know, he was, you know, he spoke Spanish, he spoke English. 
Um, and so he had the support of the Mexican community here in the United States. It wasn't until he challenged Julio Cesar Chavez, who is el campeón de México, el campeón del mundo, like you don't touch Julio Cesar Chavez. Um, and it wasn't until then that people go, oh, wait, wait, why are you, why are you challenging our champion? Even it was even, it was, it was Oscar's idol, you know, yeah. and it was just a trajectory of, you know, boxing career. You got to fight the, the, the fights that you need to fight at the time you need to fight it. And that's when he saw the community turn on him because they go, oh, well, I mean, Oscar's not a real Mexican, right? And so the whole documentary explores this, are you Mexican enough? And what does that mean? And um, it was really painful for Oscar to revisit it because he remembers like being booed in his own city, you know, by his own people who just supported him the fight before. Um, but you hit it right on the head. Uh, boxing has always used race as a, as a card. The black guy versus the white guy, the Irish guy versus the Puerto Rican. The, the, like they've always used that. And so Race, this, culture, nationalism, everything. Everything. It everything. just creates the hype, right? And it gets it gets communities riled up and, and it's a way to promote a fight. They've always done it. They've done it since the 1920. You know, it's always been been that way. Right. And there's a there's a great there's a great couple of scenes in the documentary where you really see the pain that Oscar is experiencing. Um, yeah. One, it actually made me laugh um, where uh, when he got the fight, you know, and um, his father is being interviewed and his father says, I really respect Julio Cesar Chavez. And then Oscar says, my uncle said, you're going to beat this guy. And he's and Oscar goes, wait a minute, but I'm your nephew. Yeah. <laughs> just like a poor guy. Even he's in his so family, uncle. there was a divide. Even his family, you know, some of the people in his family didn't support. His uncles were rooting for Julio. They were like, hey, sorry, man. Sorry. And he's like, what the hello? <laughs> yeah. And and it was also very interesting to me that the president of Mexico, when Oscar did hold up those flags in the Olympics those two flags, he invited him to Mexico. Yeah. And even in Mexico, they were like, we love you, Oscar, until he challenged the God. Until he challenged Julio. And yeah, he was invited to Los Pinos, which is the Mexican White House. He it was received by the president and the Mexican people. And, and then cut to this fight, the, the other Mexican president saying, if you put that flag on your shorts, uh, you know, we're going to sue you or what. I don't know what it was, but, the, you know, I, we forbid you to put the flag on your shorts. And and Oscar was like, what are you talking about? Like, and that's why Oscar hit most of his career. He had a Mexican flag and an American flag on his shorts. Always. He was just always very, very proud. He's very proud of being Mexican, but he's very aware and also proud of being an American and the opportunities that this country gave him. So he he really, you know, what I hate and what we explore in the in the documentaries when people go, Oh, you're half Mexican, half American. And you go, no, I'm a hundred percent Mexican and a hundred percent American at the same time. And these two things can be true at the same time, you know? Yes. Also in regards to the language, because I've dealt with that with uh, uh, personally as well. Um, I'm just a different character. It doesn't hurt as much. I don't really care, you know, but my, my Spanish is very Spanglish, you know, mm -hmm. it's very broken Spanish. And when I entered the entertainment industry, man, did I get a lot of crap from Puerto Rican people. And I'm like, wait a minute, how many of us are on the screen? Yeah. Really? You're going to fight with me? And I said, you know what? That's your issue. Not mine. And, you know, moving on, you yes. know, but yes. I wasn't on a worldwide stage the yes. way Oscar was. Mm -hmm. So that pain was very palpable and you laid it out very well. Um, I also want to talk about the, 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 the um, interviews, the personal aspect that you pulled. Now, as a boxing fan, it's not just the fight that sells the fight. It's mm -hmm. not just the opponent. You, yes, you need world-class opponents, you know, different styles make fights, that's great. But it's also the backstory of each fighter that mm -hmm. sells the fight. Yeah. And I feel like in this documentary, real sports fans, real boxing heads are really going to gravitate to this piece because you lay out their backstory very, very well. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that Chavez was so funny. I had no so idea. Funny. So, so funny. So charming. So vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, did you know him prior to these? No, no. I knew Oscar really well. I've known Oscar forever. 
Um, he's like a brother to me. And so I was actually nervous. I was like, I want to make sure I'm, bi I'm not biased. Like I really present both sides really evenly. And um, so when I met Julio, I was nervous because I'm like, oh, I got it, Julio. Uh, but oh my God, he's so disarming and so self-deprecating. And he is a truth teller. There, you know, there's some people you talk to and they kind of re revise history and they kind of remember it a certain way. No, he he was like very vulnerable and very honest with every everything I asked him, everything he experienced. And, you know, and he's funny. And again, you see how, you know, they started as enemies and end, ended up at the end, uh, you know, to this day, they're very good friends, very good friends. But he's funny. He's like, he's like, man, I heard about this kid coming up and then uh, to make it worse, he's good looking, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, I love the part where he said my first fight I I was fighting this little kid and then I didn't realize it was a girl. I got my ass kicked by a girl. I was dying laughing. Dying <laughs> laughing. Dying laughing. And you know the other thing about the documentaries, we had to, you know, it's a lot of archival footage. Well, Oscar has a library of his life because he was in a different generation where they recorded everything and Julio was, was not. And so it was really hard to find, um, you know, archival footage of his early, early, early fights. So a lot of the stuff we have for, for Julio Cesar were posters and um, photos, but like, you know, videotaping wasn't that big of a thing. And so that was a, another challenge was like to make sure that the, the, the archival footage supported that backstory. Like where, where did he fight in Tijuana? Um, you know, when he was sad and he, he, he was away from his mom and, you know, and Julio's like a family guy. He loves his mom and his family. And yeah, he's just a big softy. <laughs> and the parallel of the two is that, uh, who knew that Julio Cesar Chavez didn't want to box and neither did Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah. It's like, it's incredible to have those two. And they both were very, very, very close to their mothers. Very. Um, and I love how you laid that out. There was one poster uh, archival that's just, I was like, I want that poster where you showed of, of um, Chavez in his early career where he was named Mr. K.O. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh gosh, I want that one. That was pretty awesome. So, um, uh, also in regards to the Mexican style, yeah. and you know the 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 differences in them. Where Oscar opens up the film saying, "To me, boxing is an art form. To Chavez, it's a bullfight." Mm -hmm. And for the novices that will be watching this, and I encourage everyone to watch this documentary. It's amazing. Um, uh, because I have to be honest here. I was going, oh gosh, another boxing documentary. Okay, love it. And and I watched it three times. Oh, <laughs> so be sure to watch it. You get something every single time. You go every there, single you time. Go yeah, every single time. But you know, I I really appreciated how that was laid out by the uh the commentary from the other talking heads. You had real boxing experts mm -hmm. really really laying it out. You mm -hmm. know how one of them said. Um, you know, uh, Mexican style is I'll let you hit me for 10. Uh, I will take 10 of your shots and I'll knock you out with just one, yeah. you know, just to get in that one. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that was pretty, pretty awesome. Now, when they got older, um, and Oscar started talking about his mom, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, why didn't he talk so much about his dad? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, he he has a really complex relationship with his dad. Like you said, both both of them really they they didn't want to fight, but they did want to fight. They both had stage dads, you know. <laughs> Instead of a stage mom, they had the stage dads. Both of them came from families of boxing, you know, and they threw the gloves on the six year old and was like pushed him into a ring. Um, and so I think um, Oscar had a very uh, early uh, uh, exposure to fame, even like as a nine-year-old champion, as the 12-year-old champion, like he was just born to box, as was Julio. But Julio, you know, like I said, he, he doesn't have that much archival uh, stuff. But um, but same thing, they both, you know, they both really um, had a similar trajectory of how they got, how they got up. Um, but yeah, he, you know, his dad managed him and then it didn't, and you know, we were going to interview his dad, but then his dad got COVID. And so we couldn't, the, the oh. schedule didn't allow it, but he is his father. Okay. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like, you know, two years ago or, uh, and, um, no, but he is, um, he is very close with his whole family, but he, he was a mama's boy. He was a mama's boy and he was really lost when she died, just lost and drifting. And he said he gave up boxing and, and then that's when he started training for the Olympics that, that the Olympics is what brought him back into the sport. He's like, you know what? I want to win this for my mom. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, that 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 footage you have of his mom with the um, head wrap on and waving the flags. I I actually got like really, really choked up. I said, wow, yes. this is this is amazing. Um, yes. I also want to talk about because I don't want to get give away too much of the I could talk about this documentary <laughs> for hours. I love for it. Hours. I'm telling you, I was on the phone last night with my friend Adnes uh, Ferrari. I don't know if you know him. He's the boxing editor at ESPN. No, I see this. It's it's really great, and um, you know, um, but um, I wanted to know where did did you get the financing from? Oscar was there a no financial from DAZN. Yeah, from Dazone. Dazone. The zone. Um, the zone has a partnership with Oscar. So Oscar really is the big producer in this. He can't, he's like, the zone's going to produce it. Eva, you're going to direct it, you know? And I said, um, I said, uh, what, <laughs> what, you know, what, what the, the zone, like, what's going to, what is it? And I really was like, look, I need, I need this. I need this. I need this. And they were like, great done. I mean, it was like the easiest uh, other than doing it during COVID. It was, it was just a really easy, um, easy doc to they allowed me to really stay true to my lens even you know my editor who's like oh my god look at this footage I go it doesn't I get it like that's so cool it's so cool you know when you do a documentary you have to be central to the theme and central to like what are you asking what are you answering I could have done an eight-part miniseries on Oscar I could have done an eight-part miniseries on Julio that's not what I'm doing I'm doing this one fight this one moment in time and through the lens of the community, right? So like, there were so many things that I was like, I really wanted to take a left turn and explore, but I was like, no, 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 stay here, stay in the lane, stay in the lane. Um, and so they really, you know, DAZN and and everybody there really supported, like, they're like, okay, you got it. They were yeah. good. So can you explain to people who may not know what the DAZN is? Mm -hmm. It's a platform where it's really the the streaming preeminent screaming streaming platform for boxing they carry they almost have all the fights all over they have canelo they had they have a uh, golden boy you know they have a lot of uh they're the the boxing destination and this is their first feature length documentary um that they've done i mean this is the first original original feature that they've done and so they're really excited and proud of it and uh, you know they're like oh my god sundance we're opening sundance like a, a, a movie about mexicans is opening sundance <laughs> like yeah this is so good because like i said it's not just about boxing you know yes. what i mean and i think people are gonna love this so did you deal a lot who who was your point person at the zone was it eddie hines grant best and kevin grant best and kevin um, but you know, they just, they were like hands off. When do you need us? I'm like, pay for the foot the Olympic footage, <laughs> pay for the, like, it was just, they were great. I mean, it wasn't really, it was towards the end. We really, uh, worked on the, the poster and the graphics and things like that. But like every cut they saw, they were like, keep going. It looks good. You know? And from start to finish, how much, how, how much time did it take to really put this together? Was it a year, two years? About a year, year and a half, about a year of shooting. And then a, a, about six months of post because, um, because of COVID, you know, uh, once I did the outline of like who I wanted to interview, who on Julio's side, who like who are the interviewees, da, 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 I look at the list and it was all over the world during COVID. I'm like, oh my God, we got to go to New York. We got to go to New Jersey. We got to go to Las Vegas. I got to go to Mexico. Like every, all these people I wanted to interview were everywhere. And, and I wanted to create the intimacy with them and be there with them so we could have a really real conversation um, about, you know, this particular moment in time. And so that was, that was challenging was, was just getting everybody, you know, interviewed and set and, and flying everywhere and making sure everybody was tested and protected and six feet apart. And I had the shield with the mask with it. Like, I was like, I hope you can hear me because I they were so far away. Um, but the one that was, was essential to the documentary that we finished the documentary and, and we still hadn't gotten him was Jesus Rivero, which was Oscar's trainer at that time. And he's 104 years old today. What? 
Yeah. And so when we got him, he was 103. And it was like at the height of COVID, he's 103 there. I was like, he's still alive. We got to go. We got to go interview him. And, you know, his family's like, absolutely not. Like, you're not coming. And he lives in Merida, which is like really remote place in Mexico. And so that was the most challenging interview to get just because we wanted to make sure, you know, we weren't going to expose him to COVID or anything. And, uh, we, you know, we, we get there and we interview him and he's just, he remembers that fight like yesterday. I mean, he was so animated in the, in the documentary. He's so cute. Um, but he remembered everything, everything, what he did, what he said, what he, what he told Oscar in the corner, um, you know, the drama surrounding it, you know, it, he was, he was key. I mean, we already had an assembly and I was like, nope, but we got to insert Jesus here, here and here, you know, cause he was just invaluable, his insight. And yeah. so, boxing fans, if you, if you were listening, it's going to be a treat because I have never seen any footage on that man. And so I was like, oh, my goodness. Well, um, he left the sport. He was like Mr. Miyagi. And then he left. He just left the sport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, talking about the challenges. Yeah. You mentioned um, the drug cartels involvement, specifically mm -hmm. on Chavez's fight uh, mm -hmm. aside. And also the someone actually got killed. Yeah. Um, during um, the lead up to the fight. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, uh, one of the cartel members that died. The thing is, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez is from Sinaloa. Well, he's from um, Culiacan, but but he lived in Sinaloa, which is like just the playground of a lot of the cartels. And so he, he you know, he's so sweet and charming. And he goes, you know, I, everybody kind of criticized him at moments in his life. Like, why are you hanging out with drug dealers? He goes, I'm not hanging out They're 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 in my town. Like, what are you going to, what do you, what do I, what do you want me to do? Um, you know, and so something had happened somebody had died and and he moved his training camp you know uh, somewhere else because somebody like near them had had died from the cartel it had nothing to do with julio it was just the company in which was around um and you know he he's never been involved in it uh and he he makes that really really clear but you know on oscar's side during this fight he got threats from you know people that they believe to be cartel to say if you beat Julio, you know, bad things will happen to you. I mean, it was crazy, the drama leading up to this fight. Did you feel any hesitation or trepidation in mentioning the fact that the drug cartel were involved? No, no. They, was, they weren't involved in the fight. They knew Julio. You know what they I mean? knew Julio, yeah, but there was an accusation that somebody got shot. I, I mean, he walked him, you know, one of them during the, one of the fights, Literally did the ring. the ring walk with him. I mean, and then so like you, you, know, you weren't worried no. about no. And again, you know, it's not the center of my thesis for this documentary. Like that peripherally happened, but it didn't affect what I was exploring, which was identity. You know, and so again, you could go down. You can do a whole documentary about that, mm -hmm. uh, but that was it. Was it? You know, I mentioned it because it was. Um, it was. Uh, uh, um, it did happen during this time, you know, he, he walked into, it was a different fight. Um, but he walked into the ring with, uh, you know, one of the, the most wanted, you know, cartel members, but, um, this particular fight, uh, it, it didn't really pertain to, you know, what we were exploring in the doc. So I didn't really go down that road, but no, I wasn't, I wasn't scared. Cause I, again, it wasn't like I was doing a documentary about the cartel. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, sorry, I digressed back to the fight as a boxing head that I am. Um, is this going to be exclusively on the zone or are you looking for know. buyers at I Sundance? Mean, I mean, you're opening the festival. Hello. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I think that the zone has never had this happen before. So they're kind of like, what is going on? And, you know, the attention that the film is getting. And so I think uh, they may be thinking of something outside of the platform as well. Yeah. That would be fantastic because I love the zone. I think I was probably one of their first um, customers. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I remember they someone from the zone had called my manager and said oh we just wanted to tell rosie we have that she goes, he goes she's already on she already downloaded she she already told me about it she's good and i was like okay so well i hope so because although that is one of my favorite uh sports app streaming yeah. app i mean it's i mean 
the the picture is amazing the connection is amazing nice. um and i love a barack and Ock. i love the the whole team on there um but just in case people who don't have it i hope that they you know at least you know have somebody else have a, have a different also, type of platform we also have a lot of screenings during this sundance week so you can go to sundance.org and and find the screening times and buy a ticket if you want and then um and then in the future, after Sundance, I, we're going to figure out where it goes. But it's just, okay. you know, I don't know if you noticed. Also, I had a female boxing journalist. And yes. She, oh, please. That's my girl. Yes. Yes. I love her. I love her. One of my dreams came true where I got to go on camera with her when she was working with ESPN, a different network um, at uh, in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I had burned myself the night before. And my husband was like, you can't go on camera. I said, I'm going on camera with her. She's a legend. Are you kidding me? And now she works for The Zone, which is beautiful. I'm really happy for her. Oh, my gosh. She's, you want to give her a shout out? So she's amazing. She was so great. You know, it's funny because I was like, you know, it's a male industry. It's very male dominated. And I said, there has to be female boxing experts. And uh, and we found we found her and she was she was so colorful. And she added so much color because as a woman remembering that Oscar was one of the first boxers to bring women into the sport, right? Because uh, even Julio goes, I've never seen so many women at a weigh-in, you know, because they just went crazy. I mean, throughout Oscar's career, I think his pay-per-view fights and and anytime somebody had to buy a fight, the audience was over 50% female, you know? And you're like, wow. Um, and she was like, oh, let me tell you, you know? <laughs> she remembers, she was like a, a PA when this fight happened. And so to oh, see wow. to see her, so she's like, I remember, you know, I was with a news crew, so I wasn't a I wasn't a journalist yet. I wanted to be a journalist, so she remembers everything from like that perspective. It was it was really great to have her. And the other thing that I think was important was uh, Rudy Mondragon, who was the boxing expert academically, right? Like academically studying identity of the Chicano culture, Mexican culture, and as it pertains to boxing. Like he had a very specific expertise, and I was like, I need this guy. <laughs> So when is what what night are you uh, showcasing this on uh, yes. Sundance tonight? Yes. Yeah, tonight yes. and at what time so people know? At five thirty, I think five thirty is it LA time or five thirty Utah time? I don't I don't know, but tonight. <laughs> but they can go on the website and and yes. find out for themselves. Before we go, I also want to say that you know you're an amazing actress, you're an amazing political activist. And now you are an amazing filmmaker. Is this the direction you want to continue in or do you want to still do all the above? I want to do everything. I want to do everything. I love it. I love directing because you just exercise a different muscle, you know, um, but I love acting. I miss acting. Um, uh, I, I, I can't wait to get back on screen. And I really started producing and directing to create. Uh, more stories for us and in, in our community. Um, and so uh, that's the goal is to merge them all so we can, you know, continue to build the pipeline of our talent so that we can, you know, move forward in this industry because representation matters. And, you know, on this particular um, uh, project, I had almost an all Mexican crew. It was amazing. I mean, everybody, our editor, uh, all Latino crew, which you know, our editor, our composer, Tony Morales is from East LA, you know, uh, our producers, our camera guy, our DP, all these key positions were all Latino. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I don't mean to like chump this amazing documentary. Um, what is your next endeavor as a filmmaker? So I'm editing Flaming Hot right now, which is the biopic I uh, directed for Searchlight um, about Richard Montañez, who invented the Flaming Hot Cheeto. The Cheetos? Yeah. Yes. The Hot Cheeto. So we filmed it last year and now we're editing now. And it's a beautiful movie. If you think this movie is beautiful, I cannot wait for you to see Flaming Hot. It's so great. It's a narrative or a documentary? No, no. It's a narrative. Yeah. Flaming Hot. Um that's his book, but um, it was an amazing experience. And yeah, that, that I was supposed to do Flaming Hot first and then COVID happened. So it got pushed. And then I ended up doing this documentary right in between that push. Uh, and so this has ended up being my first feature uh, instead of Flaming Hot, but, but it is, um, I can't wait for people to see Flaming Hot because we don't have a lot of heroes from our community. And in the, the fact that this guy, it's not that he creates. We do have a lot of heroes. It's that people don't know about them. Exactly. We don't have a lot of in film. 
<laughs> in film. Uh, but so he he's like, he shouldn't even be alive, much less successful, this man, with, the, with what he in, encountered in his life. And he's just like American success story 101. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful story. Well, the same can go for Julio and Oscar, yeah. right? I mean, even though they said that Oscar had it easy, did he? You know, he, he was brought up in the rough part of East L.A. He could yeah. have been easily a statistic, yeah. you know. And and so so as uh, Julio um, Chavez, they could have been a statistics, too. And they were they both became phoenixes, you know, and they rose from the ashes. And it's yeah. it's amazing. And, you know, if this is going to be the the beginning of of who you are as a filmmaker, Eva, I mean, kudos to you. Bravo. Thank you. Bravo. Bravo. It is a, it's an honor and it's a pleasure. Um, I loved you from the first time that I met you. I tell everyone, I was like, she is a doll. She's freaking hilarious. And she's extremely talented and very, very smart. And I'm glad that the world is getting to see another side of you with this amazing doc. Um, tell everybody the name, nice. tell everybody the one liner and yes. they better go see it tonight. They have to go see it. You have to see it. Um, it's called La Guerra Civil. And it's, uh, you know, a, a documentary about the fight uh, between Julio Cesar Chavez and Oscar de la Hoya and the cultural ramifications that that fight caused that still reverberate today. Right. And La Guerra Civil in English is the Civil War. And that's why it was so apropos. It was a apropos. Excuse me. I just I um. I wish you the best with this. Thank you, um, Thank you for doing this. I'm so happy. Look at your Mike Tyson book behind you. Like you are boxing. <laughs> oh. it's, it's so great. It yes. goes on and on and on. It's, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I want to invite you when all this COVID mess is over, we need to sit ringside at a fight. Yes. And I'm going to turn you into a boxing head. Now yes. that you really have ingrained yourself into the sport, you know, even yes. behind the camera yes. as a fan, it's even more exciting. It's so, even more exciting. So I the really next time that the zone has a big, big title fight, we're let's going. go. We're going. We're All right. Go.